Welcome to the series. This is step one, video one, in a series called Let's Flash. Um, goal here is to lead you through this five-step process for getting the community firmware 6.1 final onto your printer. First step is going to be, where is it? Which one do I need? And how do I get it down off the internet? So let's get started. I'm going to start this journey from the Discord channel. If you are a member of Discord and you have an invitation to get here, you're going to be on the community firmware for Creality CR6 SE and others. Um, a link to this Discord is actually on the GitHub page. Uh, because GitHub can be confusing to navigate, if you find that link in the README file, I recommend you click it and start from here. This is the easiest way to get straight to the correct release. So. This guy looks like Dilbert to me without my glasses on. This is a CR6 printer, I'm sure. You're on this Discord channel. You're going to navigate down whatever else is open here. Just ignore everything until you get to development section and go to releases and click there. Make sure you're on the last post because there have been other releases in the past. You want to be on this very last one. And clicking here was going to take us to the GitHub page where it all starts. This is the latest release, 6.1. That's the one you want. It was released uh, June of last year. But this now has a table of contents, which I went to the trouble of hyperlinking so that you could jump back and forth. Because it's quite a lengthy document. Um, pardon, I don't get dizzy here, but this uh, has some large graphics in it, which make it look longer than it is. There's a lot of reading in this file, I do realize that. And when it's only when you get to the bottom that you finally find what you came for, which is the firmware. I think it's way the heck down here at the bottom. But there's a lot of good information in that readme, as laborious and onerous as it may seem to have to read it. When you decide to do the guy thing and just load the firmware up, punch buttons, and then get confused, Please come back here and look for the answers, because um, they are in here. The FAQs, for instance, well, flashing instructions will tell you how it's done. The FAQs that say, uh, how do I know which motherboard I have? Uh, what do I flash if I have the ERA? I don't want to open my printer. What happens if I use the wrong thing and just hope for the best? It's all been addressed in here as best we can. And when you um, are finished reading that and you think, how do I get back to the table of contents? Well, just browser navigate back. Right? As long as you're clicking from here in the browser, the back arrow will bring you back to here. So when we get to the files, which is really why you're here, this part says where you can download them. It says if you're using the BTT TFT display, you don't need to flash the um, community interface because it won't use it anyway. Um, so there are you know, important tips to know. When I'm working with an SE, these are the file names that I'm looking for. I know which one I have. You know, I, I have the SE with the uh, Big Tree CR6 board, or I have it with a 452 board, or I have it with a 453 or a 1.1 ERA board. This one here that says no watchdog, just ignore this please. This was put here to help people who are troubleshooting. Why does my system keep rebooting? Because Marlin has a, a feature that looks at a watchdog timer on the system and if the timer seems to have gone dead, it reboots the processor. We had printers that were um, doing things to themselves and we wanted to give them the ability to try this and see whether the problem went away. That's the only reason it's there. It's not meant to be used on your daily, daily driver machine. If you have a Max, then you have uh, your choices are down here somewhere. You'll notice underneath the scroll bar is because there's so much information here there's no room for it. We have given you the SHA-256 hash codes for each of the download files so that if you wish, when you download the zip file, if you want to make sure that nobody's hacked it since we put it up there, you would Google how to do this if you don't know how, but if you Google uh, how to SHA-256 hash 
a file it it tells you the answer gives you a little um, utility for doing it and then you can make sure that this file has not been corrupted since we put it here if you keep scrolling down github structure places assets at the bottom of the readme file so here you are where the files are these are the zips you're trying to find to go with your printer the files list was meant to help you figure out which file you now want when you come here it should always say cf61-final at the beginning they all begin with that if on your computer you're not looking at that if you're seeing 6.0 or you're seeing 6.1 pre something you're on the wrong page you didn't follow the link successfully this page is the one that you're looking for um, in my case I have a BTT SKR CR6 motherboard I have the stock Creality TFT so this is the file that I want okay so if I download the one I want I just have to click on there and Windows gleefully downloaded it to my downloads folder and if I open that folder this is the contents of the zip file that I just downloaded and included in that zip file is a link back to the discord a link to the home page on github a description that confirms this is the one for the motherboard I have and the screen that I have of course it'll say something different if you've downloaded a different file in this readme text it says please follow the instructions on the release page in detail make sure you have downloaded the correct package and so on right so we, we've done we've really done our best to make sure that what you got was what you should have gotten in the firmware folder the touchscreen firmware folder is not empty it contains another zip file and inside that zip file is the firmware for the display so when you're looking at step three I'll take you through this more patiently but this is where you find the touchscreen firmware if in fact you have a stock display if you looked in the configs files your printer if it's uh, configured differently or if you're a Mac will have different configuration files here the reason they're here is not because you're going to use them to flash anything they're here for your reference if you wanted to compile your firmware yourself you could start from these adjust them to what you wanted instead of what you got and then go ahead and, and compile again well that's an, a whole other subject right? so that's what I came to do I came to show you where to find the firmware and how to find the firmware if you have a let's see um, let's say you have a ERA 1.1 motherboard and you're looking here to find the motherboard by name you're not going to find it right that's why it was important for me to show you where the files list is it's back here where it says CR6453 or V11 ERA motherboard and there's the name of the file you need to download but that's not an active link that's just uh, text right I can click on that all day it's not going to download anything I have to find that and maybe I need a paper and a pencil just to remember it for long enough but I'm going to be looking for 61 final the 453 motherboard period no no talk about having a stock display um, so much for naming conventions hmm? but there is that file so let's go find that file maybe that's why you're here that file says 453 motherboard 21 6 etc so I come down here and I look for 453 21 6 etc that's this one okay the last one before source click on that to take it down ask Mr. Windows to please open it configs and firmware when I look in firmware touchscreen there is a touchscreen firmware there and when I open it 
This is the one I'm going to copy onto the SD drive after I've copied three kernel files from there into there, which is step three of the process and already documented. I'm going to stop at this point and we're going to see whether um, it's sufficient. The next uh, videos in the series then are um, step two where I, I help you figure out what partitioning means now, now that uh, most of the cards in the store are quote too big for this machine. Uh, partitioning may be a necessary step more and more often now. So I'll show you how to work with that and then uh, formatting the card to FAT32 4K sectors we deal with and then on step three I take you back to this file that we've downloaded here and we open it up carefully we copy the bin files into the DWIN set we put DWIN set on the card we prepared at step two we can put the firmware bin file on that card as well so we can put the uh, both on the same card and then at step steps four and five I had separated out in my design of this playlist and then I messed it up in my own head as I as I talked about it so I I confused step fours and five but but it's basically the last two steps are put the card in the appropriate slot and cycle power it should be no harder than that if we've done everything else correctly I hope you enjoy the series I hope it helps you um, I know there's more information in there than you strictly needed to get the job done it was my intent because I know things go wrong things don't always work as advertised people miss a step the system wasn't what they thought it was we missed out a detail and, and you got misdirected so I've done what I can here to show you and, and uh, help you get where you're going but if you still have difficulties by all means please let me know leave me comments uh, ask me questions on the discord and we'll get you there this uh, firmware is uh, so much fun to work with I'm sure it's going to be a rewarding experience once you get it on board and my goal is to minimize any frustration you might encounter getting there from here. Talk to you soon, I hope. Let's make it real. Bye-bye.